All right, here's solutions for perfect problem two for math 251. Uh, a couple things that'll end up being useful when you're solving this problem is knowing Pascal's triangle. So maybe I'll throw that somewhere, I guess right over here. The idea with Pascal's triangle is you sort of arrange numbers in this triangular form um, where each number you write down is the sum of the two of diagonally above it. So I don't remember how high I asked you guys to go. I think that that is high enough. Yeah, that'll do the trick. So here's the start of Pascal's triangle. It goes on infinitely as far down as you want it to go. Um, and then the other thing, use the difference quotient. Well, the difference quotient tells you that f prime of a is the limit as h approaches 0 of a plus h, f of a plus h, minus f of a, all divided by h. So this right here is the difference quotient. Um, and with all that stuff, I think we can go through and solve these problems. So the first one says f of x equals x squared. So you want to find f prime of a. Well, f prime of a would be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h, so a plus h squared, minus f of a, so a squared, divided by h. And so that is the limit as h approaches 0 of a plus h squared is a squared plus 2ah plus h squared. And you can get that either by foiling things out or by looking here. Um, the coefficients here, the 1, 2, 1, is given in this row of Pascal's triangle. So, I don't know. Do those however you want to do. a squared minus a squared cancel out. So I get that this is the limit as h approaches 0 of 2ah plus h squared divided by h, which is the limit as h approaches 0 of, if you factor out an h and then cancel it, you'll get 2a plus h. Um, and that all simplifies down to 2a. I'm going to need to figure out a better way to write these so that they're more legible. Um, all right, I'll figure that out as I go. Uh, so what about for x cubed? Well, it's kind of the same idea. Maybe I switch colors here. Except now, f prime of a would be equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of a plus h cubed minus a cubed over h. And let's see, let's go vertically this time. You can expand out a plus h cubed kind of foiling twice, or you could sort of cheat and look over here and say that the coefficients are given by Pascal's triangle. So really what ends up happening when I do a plus h cubed is I get, let me copy my limit here. Oh, I said I'm doing these vertically. Um, a plus h cubed is a cubed plus 3 a squared h plus 3 a h squared plus h cubed. So that's a plus h cubed. From that, I want to subtract a cubed and divide by h. And so what I get is the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, the a cubed and the a cubed will cancel out. Um, and then I can, OK, I'll show this step one more time. 3a squared plus 3a h squared plus h cubed all divided by h. And then I can take that up here and cancel out an h to get that this is the limit as h approaches 0 of 3. Sorry, there should be an h right there. Uh, it was 3a squared h that I wanted to copy down into this line. If I factor out an h from every term in the numerator, I get 3a squared uh, plus 3ah plus h squared. And I can now evaluate this limit, change all your h's into zeros, and you get 3a squared. Okay, what about to the fourth? Well, it's getting kind of tedious, but fine, I'll do it again. f prime of a is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of, well, now it would be a plus h to the fourth power minus a to the fourth power divided by h. And again, a plus h to the fourth power, you could expand it all out if you wanted, or you can come over here and look at Pascal's triangle and figure out that that's a to the fourth plus 4a cubed h plus 6a squared h squared plus 4a h cubed plus h to the fourth power. And from that, you want to subtract a to the fourth power, and you want to divide that whole thing by h. 
And same thing happens that's been happening. The A to the fourths cancel out, and the H cancels out with an H that's in every term that remains. And what I get is it's the limit as H approaches zero of 4A cubed plus 6A squared H plus 4A H squared plus H cubed. Note these A to the fourths went away, and I subtracted I got rid of an H, I subtracted one from the exponent of each H and everything that was left over to get here. Um, and I can evaluate this limit, I can change all the H's into zeros, and I just get 4A cubed. So I got 2A, 3A squared, 4A cubed, maybe you're starting to see some sort of a pattern. Let's do one more here. Uh, so part D, I'm trying to figure out, so maybe I need an arrow pointing up here. Uh, the limit as H approaches zero, of, and now it's a plus h to the fifth power, minus a to the fifth, all divided by h. Uh, okay, so I could expand a plus h to the fifth. I could kind of foil over and over and over, but it would be pretty miserable to do so. But fortunately, I got Pascal's triangle to save the day. Um, a plus h to the fifth is just a to the fifth, plus 5, a to the fourth h, plus 10, a cubed h squared plus 10 a squared h cubed plus 5 a h to the fourth plus 1 uh, h to the fifth. Uh, and then from that I want to subtract a to the fifth and divide that entire mess by h. Hey, a to the fifth minus a to the fifth, those cancel out again. And then every term that's left over has an h in them. So I can factor out an h from each of those terms and cancel it with this h and get that it's the limit as h approaches 0 of 5a to the 4th plus a bunch of junk that's going to end up going away, 10a cubed h, not h squared anymore, but h because I canceled it with this h, plus 10a squared h squared plus 5a h cubed plus h to the 4th power. Um, and I can evaluate this limit. I can change all the h's into zeros. This goes away, this goes away, this goes away, this goes away. All I'm left with is 5a to the fourth. In chapter three, we will learn shortcuts for finding derivatives. You won't have to do this anymore. The first one we learn will be called the power rule. The power rule tells you that f prime of a for f of x equals, oh, it tells you f prime of a for f of x equals x to the n. What does the above work suggest that this is equal to? Um, f prime of a if my function, that's hard to read. If my function were x to the n power, well, let's see, when it was x to the 2 power, I ended up with 2a. When it was x to the 3rd power, I ended up with 3a squared. When it was x to the 4th power, I ended up with 4a cubed. When it was x to the 5th power, I ended up with 5a to the 4th. It kind of appears that whatever the exponent is ends up as the new coefficient. So this n right here would be the new coefficient. And then I have an a times, and the new exponent, well, let's see, when the old exponent was 5, the new one was a 4. When the old one was a 4, the new one was a 3. When the old one was a 3, the new one was a 2. When the old one was a 2, the new one was a 1. So it appears that the new exponent is always 1 less than the old exponent. In fact, this right here is true, and it's called the power rule. And it's a lot more powerful, sorry, um, than it might ap appear. It doesn't just work when you have whole positive integer exponents. Um, it turns out that you can do that for fractional or even negative integer exponents. Um, so if the power rule works for non-integer values of n, which it does, what would f prime of a be for f of x equals the square root of x? Well, to do this problem, what you need to recognize is the square root of x is just x to the 1 half power. So f prime of a would be, well, you take that, you use this formula, and everywhere you see an n, you change it into a 1 half. So you'd have 1 half a to the 1 half minus 1, aka you'd have 1 half a to the negative 1 half, aka you'd have 1 half times 1 over a to the 1 half, or if you really want to simplify this thing, you'd get 1 over 2 times the square root of a. Frankly, this is fine way up here, um, but this I'm just doing some simplification to put it back into the form that it came from. What about 1 over x? Well, same basic idea, except now you got to recognize that 
uh, 1 over x is x to the negative 1 power. So if I want to find f prime of a, I would use my same formula. I would take that negative 1 down in front, that's my value of n, and then I would raise a to whatever 1 less than negative 1 is. So I'd have negative 1a to the negative 2 power, which is the same as negative 1 divided by a squared. Uh, so I'm going to leave my answers looking like this. And I thought that this last one down here was the prettiest. Um, but really, I guess you didn't have to simplify. So I could say, or you could leave your answer like this. And that's pretty fine, too. Uh, so there you go. There's a little introduction to the power rule. Um, so I'll call this good.